Welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, Who the fuck is Chuck? <laughs> and we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with Elizabeth Holly. And <laughs> uh, Dumbala's best boy, Tyler Hymanson. <laughs> oh, man. You, you might have heard one other voice in there for a second. Uh, we've got a special guest here with us tonight. Uh, he is a creative content producer currently running the official YouTube and podcast for Conan the Barbarian. Sean Curley is here with us. Conan. Yeah. Conan. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I got my Chucky attire. Oh, nice. Absolutely. Ready to talk Chucky, baby. Yeah, that's right. We're here doing our little check-ins as we do when we have new uh, things come out, um, you know, for franchises that we've covered in the past. And uh, we had previously talked about season three, part one, uh, earlier last, or towards the end of last year when it was airing around Halloween. And uh, here we are back to talk about part two, the final four episodes of season three mm. of Chucky. So um, before we get too far into things, though, Elis, where can people reach out to us? Yeah, uh, send us your emails to sequelrights at gmail.com. Let us know what other franchises you'd like to see us cover. And we are also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Sequel Rights. And rate and review wherever you're listening, uh, whether that's YouTube now or on Spotify or an Apple podcast. I'm not even sure if you can rate there anymore, but feed <laughs> stars to the algorithm, find, helps other people find us. And uh, if you've already done that, then feel free to share out some older episodes. We just wrapped up on apes. If you just saw Proximus mm. Caesar's reign and you want to know more, <laughs> it's a great place to dive back in. All those old movies are well worth looking into. Um, there is tons of stuff on the horizon for this year in terms of things to catch up on. And if you want to, you know, spend 14 hours uh, and a little bit more getting into the mm. land before time, that's out there too. Yeah, we highly don't recommend doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, we all, we also like we just recently talked about the new Jake Gyllenhaal Roadhouse, and they announced there's going to be a sequel to that. Ah, with, crazy, with, starring Maggie. With, <laughs> oh my god, I would die. Oh my god, that'd be god. so much better. <laughs> that is a great idea. That'd, that'd be, be insane. Idea. That'd be insane. <laughs> that's like they almost made that sequel to The Lost Boys. It was going to be The Lost Girls with Drew Barrymore back in like the early nineties. Yes. Oh, man. it would have been great. Like, that come would, on. That would have been amazing. I think that we, like, that, that would, we'd live in a better world now. <laughs> yeah. It was going to be, like, a female, like, a, and a woman biker gang, like, who doesn't want that? Like, yeah. It would have been so good. Like, travel back in high time, kill Hitler. No. Like, make sure Lost Girls gets made. We're in come a better world. Come on. Let's do <laughs> it. Like, Charlize Theron there. Like, yeah. younger Charlize. We, like, we can make it happen. <laughs> All right, well, before we dive fully into the uh, part two of season three, uh, we want to talk about Sean. Oh. Thanks for being here again, Sean. And like, uh, so what, what is your connection with Chucky? What, what, what brought you to the franchise? Do you love Chucky? What, what, what's oh the Oh, my God, yes, I love Chucky. I love <laughs> Chucky. I love Brad Dorif. I love Dom Mancini. I love them all. I, I, I have to say that, uh, you know, I, I'm a massive horror fan, but, my relationship with horror when I was younger was a lot different. I was terrified of everything. I had to sleep with the lights on. I was such a scaredy cat. <laughs> oh, no. But I had such a fascination. I, by the way, I grew up in the early 90s, like late 90s, like all that. So the 90s were my decade. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and it was like a prime time because it was just coming off of like the 80s, one of the best decades for horror. Uh, and so I'd go to v uh, video stores like Blockbuster, mom and pop stores. And even though I was uh, like freaked out by all these characters, like, they started creating like this legend in my head of like what they were and what their stories were. Cause I was too afraid to watch that. So like, you know, I remember seeing um, the covers of Chucky in particular and, you know, Friday the 13th and Freddie. And I'd ask kids on the playground, like you saw nightmare in Elm street. Like what happened? And, and I, I still remember like they had the details, right? Like, Oh you no, know, she's in a body bag and she gets dragged down the hallway. And I'm like, that's so creepy. And for, for Chucky though, I, 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 that was my gateway after Goosebumps because I got mm -hmm. into Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark mm -hmm. and I wanted a little bit more and that's how it kind of works. Like, it's like a drug. You want a little bit more horror. You want to go a little harder. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I, 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 I have to credit Chucky for a couple of reasons being like my first gateway into like real horror. And one is that I think because of the nature of, of the franchise, it, it was easier to edit for TV. So it played, I got a lot more airtime in like TNT. And I, I, I remember the first time I actually just sat down and committed to it. My grandpa was watching it. And no, I don't think he realized what he was watching. I, I think he was half asleep. 
<laughs> uh, but he was kind of, he's partially deaf. I remember walking in, I'm like, grandpa, what do you watch? He's like, Oh yeah, it's uh, something about a killer doll. He's got a filthy <laughs> mouth. And I'm just like, I'm in. Let's watch it. Uh, and I believe it was Chucky Child's Play Part Three, which is when they like remember they Andy Barclay, the actor. It's a different actor. He's like aged up significantly. Yeah. yeah. And he like there's like a whole like military school. Yes. And it ends in that fun <laughs> house at the end. Yeah. It, it was actually like a pretty cool set piece. And, and looking back, I have opinions on that now. It's actually like my, one of my least favorite of the of the series, but that was my first, and I, I just got hooked. I wanted to watch all of them, and of course, like you had to go to the video store. So that was like the first horror movie I watched, and I, I've loved it ever since. Um, That's great. That's yeah. amazing. What, what about yeah. you guys? What, what was your relationship? Uh, boy, I can't even remember what we said way back in the day. I think that I knew it more, uh, of like same, same deal. Like I, for me, I, I was scared of, are you afraid of the dark? Uh, I yeah. love horror. Um, uh, and my girlfriend always makes fun of me. And my argument is like cinema works on me. I get scared. Like I get, <laughs> like I, I, I curl up in a little tense ball even now as I'm watching things. And I had the same thing where it's like I, the horror uh, section at Blockbuster or Video Time with a Y uh, in Las Vegas is what we grew up with, or <laughs> oh, just the, the Albertsons or whatever. Um, and yeah, like all of these felt like forbidden things that I'm not supposed to see or watch. My parents like would not watch any sort of horror movies whatsoever to this day. Like I remember when they saw Fargo, like they just talked about how terrible it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> And I, the the one that stood out to me was Dead Alive. Dead Alive, with oh, the woman like ripping her so face good. off, and oh, like yeah. like I, like that always terrified me. Um, yeah. and I can't remember kind of how I kick ass for the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. That's um, also one of the best covers, like the most iconic is. VHS covers. Yes. I didn't know what it was until years later when I got into Lord of the Rings. You got to way sooner than I, but just that yeah. iconic image of her like spurning it. Yeah, mouth absolutely. Over her. Really. I think, I think this is anybody, nothing to do with the movie, really. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. I think anybody who, who spent time in a blockbuster has that, that uh, cover like seared into their brain. Yeah, or like Jack Frost, you know, with the yes. Oh yeah, Jack Frost. Like he never looks like that in the movie. I don't think. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) he looks more like a regular ass snowman. Yeah, and it's really just like a comedy too. Yeah, if you want to call it that, it's not even like scary. But to me, I was like, oh no way, man! You're like, holy shit! I'll stick to uh, I'll stick to Michael Keaton. Thank you. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, I'll stick to multiplicity. Thank you very much. (laughs) More Keaton for your buck there. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, yeah, I think I think uh, I had never really seen the movies like all together. I think I've seen clips and, you know, obviously knew that it took more of like a comedic turn, you know, uh, <laughs> later on in the films. And and I, I just love that, you know, for a certain kid that Chucky is like the fucking funniest thing ever. And it's like, a, oh, my God. And yeah. it's a great like I'm sure it was a great gateway horror film for so many people. Like I can see where like. You know, some kids would just be like terrified that it's a killer doll, but other kids are like, oh my God, he's like swearing and ah, he's so funny. Da, da, you know, and I just, I just love like, I'm more that kind of kid, I think. So. It is <laughs> insane to how, like how much it is like, oh, like it's the doll that swears and like it feels that, but like they're also like some of the most go hard psychological, like nobody <laughs> believes this kid and he's an orphan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Right>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never really uh, got into. I was a good kid. It never even occurred to me to like watch anything that I wasn't allowed to watch. I was like <laughs> such a suck up. But um, the ring was such a cultural phenomenon that then you know when I was in high school that it was like all the teens got to go see the ring, um, and so that kind of got me into horror. But with Chucky, yeah, I never really watched any of it. I just kind of knew like Chucky's one of those horror characters, like Jason and you know Michael Myers and Freddy, and I never. Uh, knew anything about it really until we did it for this podcast, which at this point now was God, I don't even know, like five years ago when we started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, Elizabeth, you and I are reversed because I'm I'm embarrassed to say I didn't see the ring until like this year. Wow. Like, my, wow. Yeah, my 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 re- like everything I knew about the ring is from Scary Movie Three. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't Amazing. know. I didn't watch it. 
I, it's, I don't know why. I've been into horror for like years. I just felt like ah, I missed the boat. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah, well, my mom is uh, Japanese, so I feel like I was probably like, oh, I want to go see this horror movie. And she was like, no. And I was like, but it's Japanese. And it was like, oh, okay, well, if it's Japanese, it's probably good. So go ahead. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> I'm just like that, that the reveal of the girl in the closet is like still one of the best jokes ever. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, that one got me More back. More Verbinski today. living up to his name. Yeah, that's right. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally totally well also speaking of uh, those other characters i'd say and you're talking we're talking about how chucky is funny and i i agree i think that's like what is what helped me really get into him um i i think there's a couple there's one key point though that like really got me on his side and that's that i mean we kind of all grew up in the same era and and the teachers that some of us had like in the early nineties were like about to retire and they were left over from the generation of teachers that like used to slap kids with rulers. <laughs> yeah. And, and like I never had that happen to me, but I had some asshole teachers like first and second grade. And and again, they were like just from another generation. Mm-hmm. And so when like Chucky like beats like kills that teacher with like a ruler, I was like, Yes. You're like, like, yeah. <laughs> just pumping. <laughs> like, yeah. I I also think that um, the next logical step after Chucky for me was Freddy because like once you realize that yeah the first one's terrifying, but if you watch like Elm Street like Dream Master like part right. four like yeah it's like a live action cartoon like yep. Freddy's Dead is a good entry point even though that's like the last one because it's just like Bugs Bunny like <laughs> it's like a live action cartoon and same thing with Chucky it was like Child's Play two onwards. Mm-hmm, the first yeah. one's a masterpiece. I love it. It's just yep. it's scary. It's good, but it does evolve from there. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not gonna turn this into a Dream Warriors podcast, yeah, but God. we could, but we're not gonna do it. So we should probably move on before we Right. Oh yeah. Time. I mean for me it's Dream Master. I, yeah. I love Dream Master and I, I love Dream Warriors, but yeah, you're right. I'm a Dream Warriors apologist, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love all of them, but yeah, Master, I just love Alice. She's mm. fucking badass. Like, anyway. So, Sean, yeah. we see you've got all the Chucky stuff. Um, yeah. What are some of the highlights of your Chucky fandom over the years? Oh, man. Um, yeah, so I I have, like, a huge horror VHS collection I actually brought for show and tell. Uh, part two, yes. signed by Don Mancini. Yes. Um, I went to the premiere of Chucky season one at the Arrow Theater. Uh, and uh, brought this along and uh, bumped into him having him sign that. Uh, but uh, probably the coolest thing I got to do was design an animated poster for Chucky Season 2. Uh, I did that through a, a fan contest, and uh, it was animated. It was fun. Uh, I, I got paid for it, which is crazy. So, like, yeah, man, I, I got I got to do a Chucky poster. I mean, that's definitely one of the coolest things I've gotten to do in my career. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I've watched every single movie. I've got the whole Blu-ray set, um, every episode. Very I love cool. it. Yeah. And Brad Dorif also just... Oh my God! Like, yes. I'm so excited to talk guy. about this. These four episodes in particular, for <laughs> right. exactly. Movies. Yeah, and yeah. we'll get to that later. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the extent of cool. it. Just massive horror fan, and Chucky is always in my heart. As is Tiffany. As is Glenn and Glenda. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is one of those things. Like to to, to close this, uh, you know, Chucky history uh, uh, and timeline out. It is one of the only franchises at this point and 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 you know part of that's because you know Wes Craven's no longer with us and, oh, and God, yeah. all these other things but like Don Mancini has like carried the torch of this all the way through and to be given this platform for this show I had somebody ask me yesterday they're like oh like you like, yeah we're, we're talking about the Chucky show like would you recommend it and I'm like I would say that if you are if you have watched every movie uh, it is one of the most rewarding experiences <laughs> yeah. to to enjoy yeah. like all the deep cuts, and and it's a fun show regardless. But uh, I don't know that if you would it, it would be greater than the sum of its parts if you don't understand every bit of lore that is being tapped into, and that's just from Don Mancini really just uh, making this this his it, franchise is the wrong thing like it's and religion is is lofty but maybe that's what it is like it <laughs> is really cool to have somebody shepherd a a story 
across so many years and so many different iterations. And, you know, we were talked about eighties and nineties and, you know, he has kind of transformed Chucky into every genre of horror that has existed uh, since, you know, classic slashers, since the, the, the inception of the genre that we, that we think of. Um, when we think of horror beyond Vincent Price. Yeah, we just we just don't yeah. often get to see like a soul creative voice like really yeah. get to carry <laughs> carry I mean, the project this far. Man. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah, he he is, it, that's an excellent point. I hadn't really thought of that, but it is true. I mean, you really can't like pinpoint uh creator. Any you know, you mentioned Wes Craven. Mm-hmm. I mean, rest in peace. Amazing. Yes. But even he, like I think I guess Scream he saw through all the way until he passed, but you know, like Elm Street, it was just New Nightmare in the first one. Then he yep. kind of did work on Dream Masters, but didn't really pan out. Mm-hmm. And and so, yeah, like Don Mancini is kind of the only, one of the only uh, pers- people I can think of, like modern horror history that has saw through his like, franchise all the way through. Like, it's it's really an incredible feat. Mm-hmm. I mean, Absolutely. even Toby Hooper gave it up after Chainsaw too. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know. And and uh, yeah, the Jason property is in a me- is a total mess. Yeah, what a mess! Jason I mean, that's Universe podcast, kicking right? off right now. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh God. Right Jason night. Universe. Yeah. One v three. Do we have a trailer, Justin? Yeah. Let's, uh, all right, this is great. You know, if you guys want to check out, actually, if you want to check out Sean's poster, you, it, it is up on the yes. official sci-fi Instagram. It was posted 83 weeks ago. Wow. But I think if you Time search flies. sci-fi and hashtag Chucky, you'll, you'll find it there. Thank you, guys. Appreciate um, that. It's, it's great. The poster's awesome. Very cool. Oh, thank you so much. That means so much to me. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's dive in right now to Chucky Season 3, Part 2. I'm dying, Tiff. Who would have thought it would all end like this? Chucky, you're a cockroach. You always come back. Not this time. Don't you want to go down in history as the greatest serial killer of all time? You're right. Whoever's left when the dust settles will always remember one name. Who the fuck is Chucky? (laughs) Something is happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Something very serious. What we're dealing with is supernatural. The spirits are trying to warn you about Chucky. He's dying for good this time. He's the only one who knows where my sister is. We have to hurry. Chucky's out for blood. Charles? Charles Lee Ray. We all live on one side of the knife or the other. It's just that my side is a lot more fun. All right. Yes. <laughs> Pretty great so trailer. Good. Love that. It's a fantastic trailer. Um, there's some great lines like in there that, we, that we'll talk about later, I'm sure. Um, well, you know what? Uh, this was, you know, we watched this part one back in October. I was a little bit like, what even happened? I remember he was at the White House. And Phantom I love the opera. Yes. Yeah. I was burr, like, burr, 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 exactly. I remember like, I was like, oh, they show a recap and it was like, oh, fuck, that's right. They had a whole family opera episode with the masquerade and the chandelier. And I totally forgot about that. Right. Uh, yeah. So Chucky's still in the White House. Shit is going down. He is. Yeah. He's dying. He's getting old. Yeah. So I have, the, I have to say, oh, go ahead, Elizabeth. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say the description on IMDb is just Chucky wrestles with his mortality while Jake and Devin take their romance to a next level. Uh, but the sort of main thing on uh, Wikipedia is, you know, they have this phone call with Chucky and Tiffany. Um, Chucky starts killing again and eventually gets to the president and grabs the nuclear codes and the kids uh, kind of start weaseling their way back to the website. But then Jake and Devin go find this doctor uh, that Chucky had seen previously and find out, you know, what's going and then that was so a, good. A hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Leo Spachaman. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I was going to say, uh, uh, for the first half uh, of season, I, I was kind of like a little nervous at first because I was like, oh, it's, it seems a little shaky here. But, uh, I mean, the second half did not disappoint. I, I also really love the two can uh, They got a lot of cameos this season. Yes. Tara Sherman from SNL. Like yes. Great, my favorite current cast member. Uh, Keenan Thompson. Mm, yep. Right. Yeah. That's probably that the best death of the season still. 
after, yeah. Yeah. after these yeah. new episodes. <laughs> I, I hope that if the show continues, we get more of that, like more cameo deaths. I, I just feel like it's a natural progression for the franchise to like get killed by Chucky is like, you know, hosting SNL. Oh my God. Yeah, no, I mean, if I, was, if, if I was a, an actor of any caliber, I'd be calling my agent and be like, how do I get Chucky to kill me? Yeah. yeah, exactly. He doesn't have time to kill you. He's too busy killing Devin Sawa over That's and right. over. over and over. Oh my God. So guys, do you ah. have a count on that officially? I think it's five times, but I could be wrong. Uh, I think it is five. There's all, but there's also, uh, I don't know if any of you subscribe to Fangoria, but the cover of Fangoria, this most recent issue is Don Mancini holding oh, a knife yeah. to Devin Sawa's neck. And it oh, basically is like, buy this issue of Fangoria or Don Mancini will kill Devin Sawa again. <laughs> again. <laughs> that's, that's a reference that's to National Lampoon magazine. Yep. They, like we're going to kill this dog. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So then I guess technically if they showed it like six times, it's yeah. pretty great. <laughs> it's too funny. We'll, we'll circle back on that later, but that is something I really love uh, about this series. It's just like they just said, we don't give a fuck. We're just going to like yeah. have characters die and play new characters. It's brilliant. And I love yep. it. John Waters is now on a second character. In the franchise. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yep. That's cool. right. Yeah. Yeah. This first episode back, I was not expecting the president to just die right away. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. In dope death, too. Oh yeah. my God. The deaths overall this season have definitely stepped it up and they're all so gross and just like amazing props that like people are squishing or, you know, stabbing things into. It's just, I just love it. It's so gross. <laughs> it is. Yeah. They definitely kicked it up a notch. It's, it's so fun. I mean, and we had a whole entire like masquerade ball of people die. Like that was <laughs> great. And one of my favorite things, I don't know if it's too soon to talk about, but the ghosts, Oh, my very God. fun. Very yes. fun. A lot of those people kind of return in one way or another, which is cool. Yes. Um, that, I, uh, yeah. I, I, oh, I was going to say the ghost thing was something I was not expecting. I was not expecting that angle really because I thought like, oh, the president's just having like trauma about losing his son and everything. And I didn't think people were actually seeing ghosts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I Whenever love that. a child it, has a children's book detailing the ghosts of their residents. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it all the way it is. It's such an interesting choice that it's it's basically a, it's a haunted house season. Like, yeah, it's in the White House, but they're doing like a haunted house yeah. themed season. And I mean, they obviously had like the Amityville house like in the first half, which mm-hmm. is like kind of like a, a teaser. <laughs> that was really cool. And uh, yeah, I I I'm a paranormal nerd, so like I love. I remember like watching all this like the haunted White House, and they had like Abraham Lincoln and. A cameo at one point. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln we'll, we'll helps kill one of the characters. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. We'll get to it in a later episode. But I just like I had no idea this was going to become like a Poltergeist crossover. Too. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, that yeah. line knows exactly what it's doing, and we'll get to it. But I was very excited about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. Fun. What else do you want to say about the first episode? Uh, God. I mean. Uh, I was just happy that uh, it was back and it yeah. definitely uh, exceeded my expectations. Uh, I was, like I said, I was like, not that I didn't have trust, but I was a little nervous because I was like, I think it's just because the nature of it having to get split up yeah. due to the strike and all that, like you, everyone wasn't as fresh yeah. and, and, and the momentum got lost and that's not their fault. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it was a really strong uh, comeback personally yeah um and things seem to be building up to something bigger than it ever had in the series which is really exciting uh great cameos excellent new characters um i mean again yeah like devin saw king is like <laughs> eyes ripped out like great <laughs> so great Ugh, so visceral yeah, i wasn't I expecting him to like stuff. even when he, that moment was happening i wasn't expecting him to die i thought he was gonna yeah. like, just get out or something but i was like oh shit no he's dying all right and i <laughs> and I, it doesn't really matter uh but i know that i don't know if it was the discourse of of some queer baiting or anything else but like it was nice to have them uh their relationship be escalated to an, a, an adult level yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, like I think that. like with their relationship, I think the reason I've been like iffy about it is because that kid Bjorn Ar- 
Vince Arneson. Yeah. He just looks so young. Like yeah. I looked it up, yeah. he's twenty. I don't know how that guy could be twenty, <laughs> but he is. Uh, he's just so because twenty is small. still so young. <laughs> I know, right? But I I don't know if this is true, but I just looked on IMDb and in the trivia for him, it says that he has to wear three inch shoe lifts just to look semi normal next to the other kids. Oh my, oh my god. god. <laughs> That's but terrible. anyway, it was very sweet, and I do think yes. it was, definitely wasn't the exact same hotel as Bride of Chucky, but I think they were trying to reference it with the mirror so and, yeah. and the, the decor of this motel. Yes, yes, I, I thought that same thing, and I, I agree. Like, Devin uh, has not really aged at all. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> whereas Jake is like, put on all this muscle and stuff. I know, and he, he's all buff. He's ripped. <laughs> I, I have to. I will get to it later, but I, I think he that actor did a great job with yeah uh, the finale. Yes, yeah, I think yeah. so too. Poor yeah. Devin too has to you know has to tongue kiss a doll at some point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes me crack up every time I watch. I've watched it like twice. I can't stop laughing. Like, <laughs> no good. It's like the no, dolls but, acting should get like an Emmy. For yeah, oh the animatronic like. But I, I know that like Don Mancini set out to like make that whole relationship very like front and center. And so I do think that this is a great moment for them to yeah. finally find, you know, cause they've been like dancing around this for a while now. And, and yeah. yeah, it's great and to I, take time out of the story to, to really do this, you know, like, and that, you know, their, their friend trying to get into the white house and, and how that develops and they come back and they're like, yeah, we had a really great time. And then she's just like, well, well fucking great. Like, how the hell were you? Yeah. Like, I would have loved to be having sex in a motel room. I'd be <laughs> here doing work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be honest, during that episode, I was really expecting Devin to die. Like, I thought Devin yeah. was going to die that episode or the next one, like, after that happened. Because, and I, on it, I, I, I've been, like, expecting him to die maybe the entire show. But, like, <laughs> yeah. more than ever, it was after that one. I'm like, okay, he's going to die. But I feel like Don gets too attached to his characters and, you know... It, it's too heartbreaking and it is, but yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, everybody knows if you're like a teen or a young adult and you have sex, that's when you immediately get that's killed. That's when you die. So. It's the golden rule. rule. It was rules. Yeah. 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 But, um, oh, uh, oh, sorry. What were you saying? No, go ahead. I was going to say the only other thing that I thought is worth mentioning from, uh, from the first episode here back, this is episode five. We get that amazing scene where, uh, the, first of all, like old Chucky looks amazing. Like, Oh, right. yeah. He's decrepit. It's great. He's still a puppet and everything. Um, but we get this amazing scene where he's like watching all these like other like killer doll related films. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Right. Yeah. And he has oh, this amazing <laughs> Yeah, he has this amazing line that I was like, did Tyler write this joke? Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, Mutt I forever and always call that movie M3 Gun. <laughs> yeah, he's like Fuck you, Mutt Gun. Oh man. Yeah. It's too funny. I, I was, was like really cracking good. up. That was a good impression. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, was the only I, other thing i i'd say there's a lot of uh uh you know they mention a lot of horror movies throughout this season and there's a lot of references to other movies and i know don's done you know he did that in the beginning with uh bride or chucky like where they you know they're going to the police lockdown station they, they see like all the freddy's glove and all that but mm -hmm. this season in particular it was like a love letter to other horror movies as well which is great i mean and movies and cinema in general, like every episode title, I was pretty cool. It was like the name of like another movie, which yep. is pretty cool. Like a thriller or a horror. Yeah. Um, so really great. There's a lot of love to the horror community in this one. This first episode is called death becomes her. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the next one is panic room. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so in Panic Room, the thing says, armed with new weapons, Chucky aims to become the most prolific serial killer in history. Uh, and this is essentially the one where uh, Chucky gets the nuke codes and is trying to uh, become the greatest serial killer by nuking everybody. Yeah. Uh, which is really funny considering we've just had, you know, Oppenheimer summer and everything. Um, <laughs> awkward. But yeah, that's kind of the main thing about this. And then also that they are, they've decided to cover up the death of the president by bringing in a president body double, which oh is uh, always a great um, look. You just need what? an excuse to bring more Devin Sawas out. More like, Devin Sawas. He, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't miss an episode. This is so <laughs> funny. I think that this might have been my favorite Devin Saw character because he had. <laughs> he was so funny, like playing like a a dipshit president like double. Like it was great. He the comedy was excellent. <laughs> 
I, I think that the thing that I love about this episode is like at this point, you know, they, they've been to the doctor. The reason that, that the, the, the boys, I, I, you know, were able to have their motel moment uh, is because this doctor basically told them like, he's going to die. Like, you don't have to do anything. Like he's, he's dead because of the Catholic cancer, um, which is also <laughs> hilarious. It's very funny. Yeah. Um, and, and they're kind of d- deciding like, Oh, like, do we should really even go after him? And, uh, you know, Chucky is even coming to the terms with his own mortality. And it's not until he gets, you know, he has the phone conversation with Tiffany, uh, which is, you know, Jennifer Tilly doing amazing work in, in the prison uh, uh, with her cadre of characters there. <laughs> but it's not until she's just like, you no, like, no, you can't die. You're going to be the best of all fucking time. And he's yeah. like, you know what, Tiff, you're right. <laughs> like, and, and he sets him off on his plan which is like again Don Mancini stretching all the way back to Bride of Chucky and everything else. Like it's weird how it's a love story, but it's a love story, and especially how this season ends, which we will get to. Um, that's what it's about, and the way that she, you know, charges him up. Uh, he goes on a full kill crazy kill spree, uh, and leads to I think my favorite line of. Uh, this season, uh, we'll get to it once we get to the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think everyone knows what that is. <laughs> Maybe I would guess, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just thought that this was funny. Uh, not that nuclear war is funny, but the fact that he's like, that's what he goes to, and he's like, I'm just gonna get the codes, and it just, ugh, what a mess. Um, but yeah, I uh, I think it was really funny with Devin Sawa like being the fake president and just the yes. wife was just not like ostensibly she would have known that this was going to happen or that this guy existed, but she's just so pissed and like get the <laughs> fuck away from my kids. <laughs> like you, yeah, you cannot you cannot let them see you. They were going to know immediately that this is not their dad. Like, come on, like you I look think like this episode where she calls uh, what's his uh, Pierce like the G Gordon Liddy uh, <laughs> yeah. like, cosplayer, which is one of the funniest things of like they cast it they did it to do exactly that and her calling it out is so good yeah i love throughout all this too that we're we're starting to see that like oh no the ghosts are like a real thing i love there's that that scene with like yes well with, with like the uh, the first lady and gil Bello's character and he's just like oh l- like look look behind you and they turn around and like <laughs> the american flag is like strangling right. like a ghost or whatever because that's what happened you know earlier and they're like yeah. look look we're, we're seeing this right here in front of us like like it's just a totally normal thing that happens yeah and then yeah um yeah they, the ghosts were amazing i i love that i mean <laughs> and again like another great way to like bring in like random actors or cameos too like a lot of yeah. fun ones even well, we'll get to it later, but I mean, we obviously see Devin Saw as multiple ghosts, which is yes, cool. Yes, so, yeah. yeah. I would, I would have been uh, more impressed if they got hit all 13 of his characters to be 13. <laughs> yeah, the priest, too. <laughs> that would be great. Like uh, the exploded head fragments of yep. the priest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if what happens in this episode is a bad omen for the Santa Claus's season three, but <laughs> <laughs> we do get this moment that happens at the end of the episode. Fuck Santa! <laughs> that was my favorite. That line. Was on the line. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think the best thing that could happen is if the series progresses at some point, like Santa is real and. <laughs> Like, he's, he's like it's played by Devin yes. Sala. Oh my yes. god, that would be so funny. And uh he's like homeless now because his home's been destroyed. And he's like hell bent on kicking Chucky's ass. Fuck it, get Tim Allen in the mix. Oh my yeah, right? god. <laughs> There's no way he would do that. But that would be amazing. <laughs> Devin Sawa makes more sense, I think. It does. Yeah. yeah. It's just so funny as like a you know, he was he wasn't going for the most populous places. He was going for the t- places to cause the most drama so that they nuke everybody back. But right. then also just like, you know, we don't actually want to deal with anybody getting nuked. So they're like, we're just gonna nuke the North. So yes. Yeah. But really, it's kind of like nuking the North Pole could cause like a chain reaction of worse. Like, oh no, it, no, it would, it would, it would kill mil- It would kill more people than a nuclear. Bomb. I love that they're just but, like, eh, it was melting anyways. Yeah. Right, <laughs> they're yeah, just like, like, they just like throw it off. Like, nah, whatever. 
<laughs> yeah, part of me wanted the apocalypse to happen, like every show, like, oh, yeah, that should happen. I actually, when season one came out and they had the whole, um, they kind of abandoned this plot. Uh, but it was like they had all the multiple Chuckies. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I was like, yeah, eventually one of them's going to get to the White House yeah. and like take over. The- <laughs> so I, I thought I, I, this was like something that in my mind, like I thought it was like a natural progression mm-hmm. to get to the White House. Um, but I also kind of wait, like, you know, this other scenario where what if like there was an apocalypse? I think that it'd be really cool if they had d- maybe in the future they did like a Chucky anthology where like random things can happen. Maybe he gets to possess all those dolls again. Cause that'd be a great spinoff series, right? Cause Chucky could die. Yeah. Cause there's multiple Chucky's out there. You could have any character. It'd be like American horror stories. You could do anything. It'd be so fun. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, if this show does continue, I hope they reference the North pole incident in some way. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like uh, mutated penguins or something. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, no, penguins are in the South Pole, right? I'm an idiot. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, not know, yes, you're an idiot, but yes about penguins. <laughs> polar bears. <laughs> yeah, polar bears. They're they're screwed. Um, so do we want to go on to episode seven? I was gonna say the only other thing, just one other thing. There was an amazing line sure. that I was like, I had to c- clip for this. I'm sure you guys know what it is. Uh, he, he, he's alerted to the fact that our, uh, three lead, uh, you know, teens right. are, are back, uh, to try to get him one more time. And he says this, which was like, you know, it's, our, it's us. I gotta, cu- I gotta grab this clip. I just love a good sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Hell yeah. Too good. You need to incorporate that into uh, our every episode. I know. Maybe. God, it's like uh, I, I was watching. I was telling Eliz, like, I was like, I'm watching this, and there's so many moments that happen, and I'm like, ah, they, they're really, I feel like they wrote this for us sometimes, <laughs> or people that love this kind of stuff. So definitely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we want to move on to the next one? Yeah. Episode yeah. seven is There Will Be Blood. Parapsychologists investigate the disturbances in the White House while Tiffany. Plans or escape. Uh, this is the poltergeist episode. Uh, Would so we say get, this house is clean. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which the White House will never be, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, they bring in uh, parapsychologists and they try to. <laughs> they bring. They're going to do this seance in which a bunch of unnecessary people are like, uh, "I need to be in this seance." <laughs> So that that way, enough people could die in the seance, but that the main yes, characters. The, the uh, most tense of this season has to be in the seance. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the vice president. Yeah, so it, the seance is the huge set piece of this episode. And then eventually we get to kind of the very beginning of the explanation about what Jake is going to do here uh, in order to finally destroy Chucky. I guess we I guess we forgot at the very very end of the la- the episode right before this Chucky basically has his Avengers uh, Infinity War moment disintegrates into a bunch of dust. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and then we go into the spirit realm and we see none other than Brad Dorif. Yes. The flesh. And and uh and and then you know uh going into this one we get this amazing like and Brad Dorif you know, usually yes. it's just like usually just like Brad Dorif is the voice of Chucky. And now we get like a full credit for him, which is very cool. Yes. Yeah, that was such a good little. Uh, I like that addition to the credits. I was geeking out so hard. Yeah, it was very uh, it's just something that like we only got one scene with him in the entire franchise. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and it was so good. It's so good. You know, uh, and and when he's dying in that toy store and like cursing the cop that killed him, like I'll get you, motherfucker. <laughs> and it was like, yes, I want more of that. And and it carried like that was a powerful enough performance to make us all believe that this doll is a real person for like six movies and a uh, three seasons of TV. So it was yep. really a treat for all of us to get to see this happen. And I Finally. feel like. This is a thing that if it's not Don Mancini and if it's not a TV show, we don't get this arc. And it's like it's been oh, yeah. it's been pushing everything back into this and like setting it up in this way for like Brad Dorf at his age and everything else to give him the platform to do this. Like and then and realizing that like the entire show is orienting towards this. I was like, fuck yeah. Like this is so amazing to get it out of like we did, you know, we've had three seasons of all the Chucky stuff that we can see. You know, we have we have Nika, we have everything else, and like having him be able to 
justifiably like be Chucky and mm-hmm. and have the screen presence of of him as an actor is just so rewarding uh, as a fan and and just a gift from Don Mancini. It's Seriously, fantastic. and and you know Nika uh, Fiona his daughter's done a fantastic job. Oh, she's great. I mean that yeah. makeup. Uh, not only does she sound like her dad, she looks like her dad. <laughs> it's great. And then so what a, an even bigger treat to see them acting alongside one another, like yeah. as the same character. Yeah. Like, come on, oh, that's <laughs> so great. It was a little bit too of like delayed gratification because the, we didn't, they didn't give in to like de aging, you know, Brad Dorif. Yeah. Or those yeah. things before they were like, we're going to instead, you know, dress up Fiona to do it and do this cool impression. But so now it makes it like even more of like a, Oh my God, there he is. Like that. He's playing the old man version now. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. Like yeah, it's, uh, it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. And in this episode, we, we get to meet the almighty Dambala. Yeah, finally, finally. It's like, you know, if you get, you got Brad Dorf there in the flesh, why not put him up against the Dumbbella, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much yeah. is just Chucky. Which is just Chucky cuz you know, obviously he he says that he's got to he, appear in a form yeah, that makes you comfortable. Of, of what you covet the most know. and he's a narcissist so there you go. <laughs> yeah. I like how clinical Dumbbella was too. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> great. Like a doctor. <laughs> Yeah, I also love he was just like, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. And he's like, well, you know, it's not about the quantity. It's the, yeah, it's you got to have the creative spark in your kills. It's so funny. Um, that was just a Tambala whole. is like writing writing horror movies. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a whole like uh, you know this is just a delicious moment for everyone who's been watching. Uh, it's great. This I mean, the week. only thing that. That like that is the way that they should have done it, and I'm glad they did. But the only way you could possibly like make that work without Chucky being the ball is like if it was Don Mancini. Oh <laughs> god, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be but, cool. That'd but be uh, great. yeah, the, the Chucky doll makes the most sense. Like, yeah, it was perfect. It was really perfect. Plus, um, it's just cool seeing like Brad Dorf interact with the Chucky doll. It was great. Yeah, I will. I I would I would one up if the if, a Wes Craven would have been great. John Carpenter would also have been fantastic. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> he's too grumpy though. He, I love <laughs> that's him. True, that's true. That's <laughs> true. Well, I will very he quickly. I went to a like, screening of the I'll Fog at the Arrow like a decade ago, and people were like, "Oh, what are you up to next?" And he was like, "And this will tell you when this came out." He's like, "I'm gonna like uh, what I'm up to next, uh, Ninja Gaiden." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Video games. I love that grumpy man. I love. Yeah, me too, man. I I I love him too. I every year at Golden Apple Comics, he'll do like a a comic book signing, and I go like every year. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He's the best man. Another living legend. Living legend. Very few left. (laughs) Yep. So. So yeah, I mean, I think the the seance. Um, this like, the show Chucky has really been into like electrocuting people and so as soon as the blood was coming out i was like oh they're gonna get electrocuted like yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was great uh it was very funny how some people just like didn't get the memo that like oh we should move uh and then they're all the ones that get electrocuted and die including the president so he's already killed two presidents well we, yeah, yeah we've got uh we, we've got another blood elevator scene you know we had we had the evil dead, evil dead rise recently too oh god yeah uh but this one people actually drown in the blood <laughs> right devin sala again <laughs> yep <laughs> Uh, that was great. Yeah, I, I love that. Like, we find out that you know he has all this power and he's killed so many people in the White House that he can use the blood that has pooled there to kill people. Ugh. So, Justin, were you slightly disappointed that they didn't license blood recruited? <laughs> they should. They should have. They should have from Metalocalypse. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been that would have been amazing. <laughs> There's not as many songs this second half. There is not of the season, but uh, you know, I think we got relax. Couple. Yeah. There's a few here and there. I think yeah. like the earlier seasons, there was way more like licensed tracks. There was, yes. But but I was like, oh my God, they're getting blood repeated. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty great. And they get, those excited. guys, they get electrocuted for a long time. They do. <laughs> they do. Uh, yeah, I guess they didn't want to full on do like a um, poltergeist lady. So they went a different direction and did like a lady that looks nothing like her and doesn't really act like her. But then they have this guy who's like affected by like what he's yeah. seen. And Timmy, he, I, did, yeah. I thought that character was really funny. Poor um, Timmy. 
But he survives the uh, seance in order to uh, start telling them what's going to have to go down here uh, at the end. I love this at the end. We, 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 we learned that the only way uh, he can, you know, attempt to try to get rid of Charles Lee Ray finally is to go into the spirit realm and fight him there. Oh yeah. And we got liners, baby. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Ex- yeah exactly they, they literally reference flatliners Liners. <laughs> um and i love that it has it there's it has this ending montage where we're kind of like we're seeing jake go under we're seeing also tiffany is going to uh right going to also be uh executed in the same looks like they're shooting the same thing into her basically and you're kind of uh, you know you kind of left going like oh man they're gonna all converge in the spirit realm this is gonna be crazy uh, yeah I, I really thought so too yeah, yeah. That was that was a great cliffhanger. Yeah, Look I had a that. question about this. Like, do you think I was maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention? But did Nika kill that prison guard, or did that prison guard just die by chance? No, I, I think you're shot in the face. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, no the women. The, the lady. Woman. The lady. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I think Nika killed. Her. I thought it was okay. Nika yeah. too, but it was very. It was never. It happened. It all clear. went down so fast. Yeah, I, do I would say that it was funny Nika. if it's random, though. I think yeah. it's I think it is random because you see someone like get out and stand up out of that truck of roses or whatever the heck it was that hit her. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see, I think you see someone like open the door and stand up and get out and be like, "Oh my god!" You know, like, maybe that's right, a right. season five distance. reveal. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. So yeah, I mean, uh, Jennifer Tilly Tiffany's plans to uh, thwart her execution just completely go up in smoke, and because uh, even though they're all like obsessed with her, uh, she's really mad that they won't call her Tiffany. They keep calling her Miss Tilly, and uh, yeah, so then this funny. one pivotal lady gets killed before she can uh, convert the sniper. Oh my god, oh, that was crazy. Uh, also, my favorite part. I'm, I we'll talk about the break, prison breakout soon because I, I mean in a second here. But like my favorite thing is when she like doesn't die and 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 she's escaping and uh, Nika's like, "You fucking bitch! Like you're gonna get whatever." <laughs> and she's like, "I'll see you soon." Like she like she's in love with her. And I'm just she's like so yeah. in love with her. <laughs> oh great! And I it's love so funny like, how they commit to that so hard. Like Tiffany's just absolutely like head over heels in love with Nika still. Like, I know, and Nika, you know obviously fucking hates tiffany and is here to see her be executed but still somehow in it finds it within herself to have this moment of compassion to give a message to tiffany from Gigi, who we didn't want to pay to come this season i guess uh yeah, they weren't yeah. available whatever so nika is here to deliver you know like a goodbye message and you know even though you suck like you were a good mom kind of a thing which right. she didn't have to do like you know it's yep. just like it's crazy cool. that nika still can find that uh, within herself what's interesting is um you know glenn glenda i, I was the voice of billy boyd so like actually yeah. i feel like yeah they didn't want to pay billy boyd or like it just was too hard for them to like figure out okay would it be weird if he just shows up for this one episode and then doesn't come back which right, it probably right. would be but i really want more of that character yeah me too um it is really cool that we finally got billy boyd back but yeah, it, that was that was a hell of an episode. Are we talking about that episode yet? Can we can we talk about the breakout? Uh, yeah, we can. So just yeah. for then that brings us to the final episode, which yes. uh, is called Final Destination, and it says Jake faces his demons and a new type of evil in the quest to find Caroline. But it, I mean, it's all over. Uh, all the over quest the for Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, we have um. They, Tiffany, so she escapes from the prison in, yeah, in this episode. So, yeah, yes. let's it's, talk about yeah. the prison escape. Because, the escape yes. is nuts. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's probably, yeah, like, I don't know if it's the most epic thing that they've done this season, uh, like this season, <laughs> but it does, it feels unique in the Chuck universe. It does. Yeah. It, it feel it felt to me like a great moment for Jennifer Tilly. Yeah. To be like, yeah, this is the star that Jennifer Tilly is. Yep. And she's having her, you know, hot like action scene where she's like getting escorted out of like all this violence by like a John Wick type like assailant. So like it's great. And uh it, it really felt like one of those moments, like there's a lot of moments throughout these series where it's just kind of like a wink and nod to cinema. And that was one of them. It was like her yeah. John Wick moment. And uh 
There's like the man. That was great. Yeah. There's like this pulsating like synth track playing and it's all slow yeah. motion and very cool. I, love I did this. love too how they released all the rest of the women for no reason really. They yeah. didn't have to, but just to make it more chaotic and insane. Uh, and they didn't. None of them really ever gave a shit about Jennifer Tilly, but they were like, "Freedom, sure, why not?" Prison Break. <laughs> They're like cheering for her as they go, but she runs by. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great. It was great. And yeah, I, I, I love that they bring like the same track they bring back again later when we like catch back up with them. Like after we've seen all this stuff in the spirit realm, we come back to the prison break later. Yeah. Um, okay. So back to Jake, he has taken the mysterious government uh, truck that will kill you for five minutes. <laughs> uh, flat it. That they've apparently <laughs> tested on a lot of people already. <laughs> <laughs> Which they're yeah. like, oh, it was five minutes for adults or whatever, so it should be fine for him. It's fine. Should they're playing on like the, the CIA like tested a bunch of weird shit in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. That yeah, guy that really is like the worst character, I think. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, that uh, fixer guy. Yeah. I mean, look, nothing against the actor. He was great, right, right, right. But, like, yeah, I, I, I could have done without him. Like, he wasn't yeah. my favorite, but it makes it well get to it but it makes it all the better when we get to see his death oh yeah, yeah. i was definitely I mean, like when is this guy gonna die come on i mean he die. is yeah. doing like the so like i don't know if you guys like know who like g gordon liddy is like was like a nixon thug yeah i, I tried to watch a uh, white house plumbers, plumbers. on hbo oh yeah it was just so wacky yeah and which is like it's true and like and justin throw in that role is hilarious to right. me like i love that performance and like it does make this pale in comparison because right. like uh but too. yeah it's like it, this is this is an archetype but like when you're dealing with like if you already made the joke of like you went to amityville and the white house is darker and <laughs> like the white house has more blood on its hands then, like, this government CIA stooge doesn't need to, like, operate without consequences for an entire season. Yeah. Uh, it, does, yeah. it does end up... Uh, I mean, it makes his death satisfying, but it, it is like, okay, like, I've had enough of this guy. Well, I kind of... <laughs> yeah. I- I kind of enjoyed the insane ramping up of like what he was like. <laughs> he was like at the yes. end, he was like, no, the entire family has to die. Like we got to yeah. kill, we got to <laughs> kill all these people and start over from scratch. <laughs> I thought that was kind of insane. Yeah. In a fun yeah, way. I thought for a minute there were going to be some kind of like body snatcher thing when they brought out like more clones or whatever. People, <laughs> yeah. but it, it also would have been great if that character, like at one point was just a fixer for Chucky, like cleaning up all his mm, bodies. and That would have been more, yeah, entertaining to me, yeah. but. It could still happen. Yeah, very, very likely. Um, so yeah, Jake's in the spirit realm, uh, and he has to what? So it, he first has the cathartic moment with his dad before he sees the movie theater. Yeah, correct. Okay. The first thing he 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 sees when he gets in is his dad, like yeah. destroying one of his like art projects that he had. President Dad. <laughs> President Dad with the beard. I, I I appreciate that Chucky uh also took a moment to like just let Jake know that his art is cool. <laughs> like when his yes. dad's shitting on his art once again and smashing it apart, he's like, I think that your art's pretty cool. You know, like I was like, Yeah, it is cool. It's cool art, man. I thought it but- is very weird, like how Chucky and Jake have had this relationship where, yes, it's adversarial, but they do like each other or in a weird way. It's like a father fatherly thing that Chucky's always had for Jake since he was first protecting him from his abusive dad. He's always been supportive of his art. He'd never cared that he was gay. Uh, and except when he wanted to make a, like a joke about it or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, never in an actually like judgmental way and um it just yeah and this like when he's talking to when jake's talking to his dad his dad's like okay yeah chucky killed me but like let's be honest like you were into it you know yeah, yeah and you that, that is interesting to cope with i think you know i when this show started it quick my theory quickly got debunked in the first season but uh, you reminded me when it, when it first started. I thought that Jake Wheeler was somehow related to Charles Lee Ray. Like I thought maybe yeah. Devin Saw was like Devin Saw and his brother were like the nephews of Charlie Charles Lee Ray or something. Um, because the way that Chucky was like talking to him, it, it felt like there was some kind of like old feud that occurred between like this old family. But none of it paid off really. Mm-hmm. But it, it's probably more interesting that that didn't happen, honestly. But Yeah, and Jake's always gone back and forth from being like 
Uh, maybe I do want to be like Chucky and then be like, no, no, this is wrong. And then like, oh, well, now I have good Chucky and I can like, you know, work oh, on yeah. him and fix him or whatever. And it just, it's very interesting. I um, love good Chucky. Good Chucky is so fucking cute. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my God. What? Heartbreaking too, though. Yeah. Um, well, and I think that the, the, the series has kind of danced the line of Jake. Like the world doesn't want him. They've had, they found friends and like, but there's things to be frustrated and annoyed with. And like, what you, what do you do with the rage against that? And like, there's a part of it that like, we'll get into what happens at the end of this episode. But like, I, it was exciting to me to have to go have Jake go into uh, full murder mode. Yeah. But, that was so fun. Yeah. But yeah, before yeah. that, we get the uh, very hard to write, even harder to shoot and execute line. Forget it, Jake. It's Chucky Town. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Like, do you think he was named Jake in episode one to like literally <laughs> yeah. somehow get to the point where they could do this line? Yeah, there's like a whiteboard that was on lockdown that has like a behind an iron curtain, and it was just like that was one of the secrets on that whiteboard is like oh, good. season three, like big payoff master plan. Yeah, <laughs> Chinatown reference, and it did, and it did allow us to have this montage of all the kills, which I think is a delightful thing. I I think that you know I love old Hong Kong action films where they show the stunt five times, like show the kills five times, like <laughs> I'm all about it. Then we yeah. get the like multiverse Chucky uh, movie theater. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. We get to see uh, buff Chucky again, which is great. Um, yeah, the apocalypse, apocalypse now. now Chucky. Yeah, yeah the uh, Marlon Brando Chucky. <laughs> I yeah. thought that was a great call. I wasn't expecting to see all those characters. I, I, I thought it made sense that like, oh, we're seeing all the different age variations of Charles. Yeah, the Ray. kid and the teenage one, and then of course. Um, Nika. The one with Fiona Dorif, yeah. 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 Dorif yeah. version. That was man, Don Mancini is so loyal to his uh, his players, man. So loyal. Truly. Even that kid, he even brought that kid back. Yeah. Like, that played young Chucky. Like, that's dedication, man. It's impressive. And, I mean, he brought back Alex Vincent, too, obviously, which I know you guys already talked about that, but I'm still not sure if he's really dead or not. But, like, man. Yeah. It, it, Never. It feels like if you're in Hollywood and you land a role in Chucky and you do a good job, like, you're set. You yep. know he's going to take care of you. <laughs> yeah, you can come back. Anything. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that whole thing was great, and we get to lots of, like, you know, kind of existential Charles Lee Ray dialogue, and there's that great, like, line in the trailer about uh, – how like you got to decide which side of the knife you're going to live on. And the, the thing is that my side of the knife is more fun, which I just love that. Man, Justin, you have such a good impression. It's fun. It, I mean, it's a great voice, you know, God, it's so good. And he, it was fun to hear, you know, later, you know, Jake gets possessed and it was so fun to get to hear him kind of. Like right. Yeah. So there's, there's a sort of um, bedside talk with good Chucky, good Chucky and, you know, whatnot. Uh, but eventually it leads to Jake getting distracted and all the other Chucky's kind of, uh, uh, you know, attacking him. And uh, yeah, that was a great reveal. He was like, oh, yeah, no, uh, original Chucky is uh, going to possess your body right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was good stuff. And, and then, yeah, and then when he beats up the medium, he's like, Jake's fucking buff. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Buff. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I love that scene. And just, like, the shot of him just, like, kicking him in the... I mean, you just, like... It's like a POV shot of getting kicked he's in the, the face. man to death. <laughs> well, when it first starts and they reveal that he's taken over Jake's body, I would, like, you know, I was a little bit like, oh, my gosh, like, we'll see how he's gonna pull it off yeah. you know I, was like, I don't know but i think he did it he really he's been around these people and all this character long enough that he did a really uh, they had to cast him for that moment right like maybe i mean i can't imagine they would have known about it way back then but yeah yeah i just love the layers of like it's fun to see not only you like you know uh Jake pretend and put on the Chucky voice, but it's also funny to think of like Chucky pretending to be Jake, you know, right, right, and all yeah. the stuff that he has to say, like, oh god, I just don't want to talk about it, and uh, like, you know, I hate violence and all this stuff. It's like so. I funny. think that that might have been the best bit of acting from that actor too, like when yeah. he like turned yeah, into really Chucky. Good. It, it was like more compelling than his normal character. Like I, I gotta be honest, I, I love talk about the it. franchise. I love these characters, but. It, 
we'll talk about where this goes. My am kind of glad that it kind of gets like wrapped up a little bit because it's growing a little bit weary. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, this agree. is like really fresh to see him at least get to have a little bit more fun. Like that actor got that fun in that role, and it kind of proved to me like, oh yeah, I want to see what else this guy can do, like in in different roles and stuff, because that was fun. Yeah, I guess I hadn't like when that moment happened. I, I guess I hadn't like looked to see how much time left was, was left in the episode, but I kind of was like, oh wow, so this is what we're gonna be dealing with next season. Like, we're I gonna, thought maybe, yeah, I was yeah. like, is it gonna be a whole season? Yeah, he's gonna be pretending. Yeah. But it's also pretty ridiculous that <laughs> that Devin and Lexi don't immediately clock this, especially when he's like saying things about Devin being his lover or whatever. You know, like whatever. Yeah. He was so saying. what does he say when they meet John Waters? He's like, we're two homosexuals. Right, like, right, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> could ever say <laughs> and it's and it's so funny because he like yeah he does this like very proper introduction like this is devin young and we're we're a couple and this is he like gives yeah. the last names and everything is so funny yeah yeah it's really funny uh yeah i think that it's um i i love where this ended i love john waters performance in this yeah uh, i do think that like there's a bunch of strangeness <laughs> that that happens here yeah uh, <laughs> They all end up being trapped as dolls somehow. Like, yes. you know, like little yeah. puppets. Yeah, I was like, so uh, that was another thing too. I was like, are they going to not reveal like what happened to them? I thought maybe they yeah. all got made into their own like Chucky doll, like good guy doll type thing. I think it would have been cuter if they were dolls, but Me too. yeah, I get it. Yeah, I got to be honest. I was a little disappointed because like I, I've been waiting this entire show for Don to create a new doll. And for a <laughs> yeah. long time, I thought that it was going to be Nika. I thought that yeah. Nika, because she lost her arms and her legs, it's like, where do you really get bring that character next? I thought she was going to become a new doll, but be like good. Right. And like, at least there's like a new spin on it. And maybe that'll still happen down the line. But the the marionettes could be cool, but it, it just I think the effect was cheap, and it just looked like and they did they just like superimposed their face on it. And yeah. It wasn't really a, it wasn't a great it wasn't a great. It uh, doesn't make execution. sense with how we've seen people be possessed into dolls. So I don't really understand. Yeah. yeah, one I don't understand how it happened. Like, what did they knock them all out and yeah. do it all at once? Like, all <laughs> but I don't. But know. that is actually beside the point because the entire point of this is to get Jennifer Tilly. Back in the Tiffany doll, one hundred percent. You know, I, I was thinking about that too because that, that's another thing I've wanted this whole series is like I yep. want more Tiffany, and we got a little bit of that in season two, and then we lost it. And I'm like, I just really miss Tiffany as a doll. I I'm sure it was because they wanted to give Jennifer Tilly like more of like an on screen role. Yep. Yeah. But the great thing is is that she can come back and play different characters, right? Yeah. Because Devin Saw does it every season. So why the hell can't Jennifer Tilly come back and play like a completely different character while we still have the Tiffany doll? You know? And that is something that I guess we maybe we didn't even really talk about of like how in this episode and everything else where like Brad Dorif was able to be Brad Dorif and like be an old version of himself even more across this. Uh, you know, we talked about a little bit in the last episode, but like I hope that that there's more of that too. Yeah. Um because we have spiritual Charles Lee Ray and we have spiritual Tiffany and we have doll versions and, and yeah. I do think what you say is right though. There, there is, there needs to be an influx of dolls because we've killed every Chucky doll in the world, supposedly other than these secret ones. We don't know about that. They keep discovering. So it's like last season we were like, we killed every single one, but then now they're like, Oh, there's another one in the old guy's mansion. But um, it's just kind of like, yeah, we need a, a new doll or I, some dumb toy company needs to ill advisedly, you know, re, um, right. boot the good guys or whatever. What about um, Mark Hamill's uh, Chucky? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah, right. Don't mention that. Yeah, that's why. That's why I thought like you know they were doing such a big deal about like what the heck are those guys looking at in that like what are they seeing? I thought for sure that like yeah they were going to be transported into the like their own versions of themselves in a doll or whatever, and then yeah that we were going to maybe have like then like an all doll season where like all these dolls are running around like in the next season. It would have been so good, but that's not what's I happening. mean maybe that could still happen uh, i mean i I definitely think from what I've heard because I did some research 
uh, if it gets renewed, season four is going to be a complete like reset almost. Like I think it'll be the same way. Like maybe these characters will come back in the kind of same capacity that Alex Vincent reprised, oh. like Andy Barclay or Nika. You know, Nika okay. had those two movies and she was a star, but then she be- kind of became a background player. I think these characters will return, but this is Don's way of kind of like putting them off in the corner. Like he's done playing with them for now, and they can always oh. come back. Okay, you know what I mean. That that's my vibe I get because he said. That uh, and, and Brad Dorf said that the pitch for season four is completely different and really exciting and will be fresh. Well, um, and obviously I mean, we have Tiffany and Chucky together. I don't know what that means. I also heard that there's a movie in the works. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And then also an animated series that he wants to do. I oh, would have said because I, I was can thinking say that Chucky at the end of this makes his pitch for season for his fourth term. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God. He does. I fucking love that. <laughs> I feel like Don is basically coming up with like three escape hatches. Yes. Like he's like, okay, if we don't get greenlit for season four, we'll do a movie. If we don't get to do a movie, we'll do an animated series. Like yep. it seems like those are like the backup. So he really clearly wants to continue. Well, and um, there's only so much that can happen yeah. to these three kids before they, yes, turn into Kyle and Andy and just become Become professional Chucky hunters. 100%. Like yeah. they yeah. still are trying to have a normal life from what we've seen so far, but it's just kind of like, and and I I do want to talk about Caroline too because when they get there, the, <laughs> oh, like yeah. we've said, Lexi has spent so much time. I gotta save Caroline. I gotta find my sister. Blah blah. They basically they finally get there, and she's like, I don't give a shit about you. I am all in on Chucky and <laughs> yeah. me and Dombala, and I can do the, the Dombala thing now. And yeah, it, so that's a big thing for her. But she's so much younger still. So if they want to keep her as a character, and she does ride it off with um, yeah. Chucky and Tiffany because she knows how to drive. And, and she says, I'm too young for this shit. Yeah, she, I'm too young for this. That was so you know, funny. To me, it'd be most interesting if like Jake and Devin realize they like being mariachis. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> they're just like this is like a perfect life like we don't have to worry about anything anymore yeah that was great also we have to i have to mention so i rewatched the finale before this and, and i completely missed this really fun detail that okay. uh uh john waters plays the character he plays is weldon wilkins right mm-hmm. and he's the mm-hmm. creator the good guy at all and he mentions that his eight-year-old son was murdered by a uh, psycho in a mall in 1983 yeah. stabbed to death right. I'm like whoa for a show that's getting really campy, that goes back to like something super dark. And then it's like, okay, did Charles Lee Ray murder his right. son? Right. Like, what is that bit of lore that they just dropped on us? Like, that's so nowhere. specific. And then I love yeah. that he's like, <laughs> don't touch me. And I, I don't wonder, like, did, did his son look like the good guy doll? Was he like a little redhead kid? Like, I think so. Else? Yeah. yeah. That's, that was, be, that right? was like my, my immediate read on it. But I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm hoping that we see that flashback. I want to know more. I want John Waters to return. I want to see more of his like history. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I think, uh, are we at rating system time? I think so. All right. How many Santa seeking nukes would you fire upon uh, Chucky uh, season three, part two? Out of how many? <laughs> Out of 10. Uh, ten, ten, Z's. ten. Ten being the best. I don't remember what I gave part one, but... Um... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll send eight nukes uh, yeah. out of ten, and if I am um, mistakenly uh, rating it against part one, I apologize, <laughs> but I did like this second half better, and I think it's just, like you said, it's a, uh, a, a result of this forced break that was probably never planned when they were writing yeah. the arc this way, um, but, you know, uh, whatever. It's uh, really funny how it all kind of, you know, comes to a head here. And uh, yeah, I like the nuke stuff. And I think, yeah, Jake, um, that actor's performance was just great and fun to see him uh, imitate Chucky, imitating him. You know, that that kind of stuff is always fun. Like, you know, Mission Impossible or whatever. We talk about all those kind of things. It's always really, really funny to see actors just completely go nuts on that stuff but yeah i don't i have i do have kind of questions about where this is gonna go uh what's gonna happen now that they're in this like marionette thing and um 
the see the thing with the thing with a marionette is that it's got strings and it needs to be controlled, whereas a doll yeah. can be kind of you know somewhat autonomous. Let uh, me point you to this little documentary called Pinocchio. It's <laughs> <laughs> the blue only yeah. Smokio is <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. But marionettes are sort of inherently creepy. I mean, I've been literally been to Salzburg to the like marionette sound of music place and seen a show there. Um, so. So it's pretty creepy but yeah uh we'll see where it goes i'm excited um you know to see what happens here and how they're gonna introduce devin sawa back we need to yeah. start right now looking for guests from the bob baker marionette theater yes pull in for next season <laughs> if the trailer seems like it's marionette related we'll see yeah. <laughs> uh i'm gonna also go ahead and say and give it uh <laughs> eight santa seeking nukes as well, I mean, I think this is really fun. Like, you know, th- there's not many more rewarding like shows like this that really are following like uh, a canon of all these movies. And like, really, th- this is for the fans. Like, I don't know who else. Like, I feel like you could probably enjoy it if you just randomly are like, oh, should I check out this Chuck show? But I feel like so much would go over your head and you'd probably be confused. Um, but for us, it's great. And I, you know, like I cannot get enough of Brad Dourif and Chucky and the performance and everything. It's just so much fun. I think my main uh, gripe, and it's not even that big of a deal, but like my main thing would be like that, you know, this is, I think, um, I don't feel like I felt this way in the other seasons, but this season I definitely felt like there were moments where it's like, oh man, they bit off way more they can chew with the budget on this. Mm. Like there was a lot of shots where I was like, oh God, that looks not great. <laughs> Yeah. Um, especially with the fire at the end and the white house and stuff. Um, so it's like a little bit like, Oh, their ideas outweighed what money they had. But um, it's a very small gripe that really isn't that big of a problem. This is the one minor thing I was thinking of. Um, but anyways, this show is great. If you're a fan of Chucky, you should be watching it and helping to, uh, you know, get a new season by calling one six, 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 one bad doll. Or what did you call it? <laughs> no, I didn't did you call, call it? it. I didn't call it, but I don't know Me if it's either. a real number or what. But you're you're subscribed to Chucky's texts. So I do get true. his texts. There, it was really funny that in the middle of the season, I wasn't watching, but in the middle of the season, uh, there was a text like, "Oh, uh, the systems networks are down. We're having uh, trouble communicating uh, with the spirit realm and all this stuff." And I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is going on?" Like, because I wasn't watching it until just now. But funny stuff. Okay. I am going to give it seven Santa seeking nukes. Uh, and it's exactly what you just said. I do think that the ideas exceeded the execution on this season. And that affected me a little bit more this time around. I don't know if I'm becoming cynical in my old age, but uh, I, I was just like, I, I enjoyed last season building up to the, the phantom uh, part of it and the party. And I, I thought that that all worked. I thought that the self-referential stuff, I loved it a lot, but there was parts of it that I was just like, oh boy. Uh, (laughs) And, but I still had tons of fun with it. And I want them to get all the creative freedom and all the budget needed to uh, support the uh, wildly fun ideas that they're trying to pull off. Yeah, that's, I, I, I'm going to have to go with eight out of 10 as well. Um, I, I think I agree with everything you guys said. Um, for me, like sometimes with the entire show, the story can the story structure can be a little wobbly at times. And I do feel like this was the right time to kind of close the chapter on the trio. Um, mm-hmm. Like I'm just growing a little weary of them. They're not really going anywhere. And I think unfortunately, the only thing you can do is like kill one of them off. And like given it, but like I don't really want that to happen. So I think what happened, the way that they ended that, or kind of cl- put a button on it, was perfect. Uh, I finally got my wish of seeing more dolls created, even if they were marionettes and it didn't look <laughs> as great. I'm excited because it opens up the door uh, to more in the future, and I really that's like this thing I still want. I want like a legit new doll in the next movie or TV show, and it was fun. And we got Brad Dorf. Brad Dorf alone, by the way, gets like ten nukes. I mean, yes, that, yeah, that right absolutely. There. <laughs> All you could have just like showed me it as Charles Lee Ray, ten nukes alone. Um, <laughs> but, and it and it would have been great to see Glenn slash Glenda uh, again. But I'm sure there's more in store for the future. So and that's oh, and also uh, big props to uh, 
uh, for the use of John Waters. I think that was a perfect role for him. Again, it's his second Chucky verse role. Right. And uh, he kind of reminds me, like, I think John Waters is kind of like our generation's Vincent Price. Like, uh, in a oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and, and it's just a pleasure to see him uh, in any kind of role, like, especially when that one line when he's, I don't think anyone mentioned it, but he's like, uh, after he's talking about his son's death, he's like, and it messed me up psychologically you give me the perfect say, in for my theory that uh dan stevens hamming it up in across every horror franchise is making his bid to be the modern day vincent price <laughs> oh my I am god all for it. that is all a hot take it, it is that my is hot, hot, take, is hot take and he's doing it and i love it <laughs> yes i love dan stevens yes that'd be great maybe we could get him in chucky yeah. Ooh. Oh my God. Hell yes. <laughs> he would, are you kidding me? He would love that. He would it would be, it would be sure. insane. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, just for fun, I went to Rotten Tomatoes and uh, whatever remaining critics are still reviewing the show gave it 10 out of 10, a hundred percent. Nice. All of That's the, all great. of the nukes going towards the North pole and the audience gave it 85%. It was pretty great. See, that tells me that, uh, you know, this show truly is only meant for fans, like yeah. people that like yeah. it. Because anyone that doesn't f- keep up with these things, like they're just gonna fall off, and it's not gonna be worth their time. Uh, but if you love Chucky, you love it. And I mean, I went to Halloween Horror Nights this past Halloween, and oh, nice. that house was going strong. Those lines were so oh, long. Nice. So yeah. I, I have strong hope for season four. And I have to say, Peacock, if you're listening, you'll do it if you know what's good for you. Because <laughs> right. the only thing that any of us subscribe for is yeah. Chuck, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's i i seriously yeah. did reactivate my subscription just for this show yes <laughs> yeah. if you want to if you want to juice peacocktober then yeah. peacocktober uh, that's great it's uh, not peacocktober without chucky yeah it's yeah. not peacocktober that which is the real thing that they called their october line yes, yes by the way like wouldn't that be great too if they just like utilize chucky more as like an elvira type character too and yeah, have, like, yeah post more i know he's done that that's something they've kind of done but they should do it every halloween yeah that'd be great yeah i uh yeah i really want them you know honestly i want like as much chucky as we can get before anyone oh i will say one more thing um i think that fiona uh so nika you know fiona dorf did great i hate to imagine a world without brad dorf but she gives me hope that maybe the franchise could possibly survive beyond that if she could take on the role one day. Oh yeah. Um, but we'll see. I mean, you know, that's, that's tough to imagine, but it does give me hope that this franchise has like the ultimate legs. And I really attest that to what you guys were saying in the beginning, that Don has created not only like this community, but family that cares so much about this silly concept and it's constantly reinventing itself and it feels safe to do so because everyone's eating it up and we're all on board. NBC Universal, I am pitching you right now. I am throwing down the gauntlet that uh, you, this year your Halloween programming should involve a TCM style intro yes. for every horror movie that is hosted by Chucky, and he's talking about the horror history of. And I will produce it, and I will write it, and we will. Everyone here will shoot it, or we and find get Brad Dorf it. Brad Dorf the take it. Yes, free I, idea. I do have to say one last thing that, or a couple things. One. I thought there was a very fun and like, it's not really a connection at all, but I was like, I was like, Oh my God, there's an apes. There's a planet of the apes connection here. We've got a, we've got an, uh, we've got a Chucky Lincoln and like, we have, oh the, we, have, right. we have those favorite, busts of like uh, Chucky sequence. Lincoln yeah, and the, you know, the, yeah, the Washington, uh, um, the monument. Monu- yeah. yeah. Not the monument. Lincoln but, Memorial. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Yeah. That's what I'm trying Mount to say. Oh, Mount Rushmore. Rushmore. Yeah. Yeah. I just love that, like, we get this, like, you know, we had Ape Lincoln in one of our episodes, and we got the the uh, Chucky Lincoln in this one. Um, the other thing I was going to say, I'm incredibly curious what a movie would entail, you know, because conventional yeah. wisdom would say, like, oh, there's no way that, like, it's going to continue with any of these characters. But you would also have thought that, like, the Chucky DV show was not going to continue the story of... Uh, Curse of Chucky and Cult of Chucky, because like, does anyone see those movies? Who knows? You know, like, yeah. Uh, so, so you know, anything could happen at this point. I'm mean, be you know. In curious. some ways, I feel like that might be the best way to continue is to do a movie and then maybe just do a new TV series after that. That's completely different. Yeah, because it gives us a little break. It's a fresh start, and it gives them like 
the budget of a, an entire season. And I'm assuming, look, I'm going out on a limb here and I'm assuming it'd be like a Peacock movie, right? It seems right. like that's what they would do just because the lore is so like, as we talked about, like intense, like you have to see everything. I don't think they'd give it a theatrical release, but maybe. Yeah. Um, so I almost think that's maybe the best way to go as a fan. I'd like to see a really fun movie where they throw, they have a bigger budget. They can do more and then start like a new show. That's like almost like a new thing. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Writers go around town, start pitching. I have three <laughs> words for you. It's Dan called Stevens. This is Jason. <laughs> uh, hey, actually, uh, God, I know you guys want to end this, but like, uh, Don actually does have an idea for Freddy versus Chucky. Yeah. Oh man. That'd be amazing. Yeah. It's like uh, kind of like they, school for scoundrels where yeah. that, it's like a take on that movie <laughs> where Freddie and Chucky like meet each other and Chucky's a huge fan of Freddie and he's like, I'm a big fan. And they have like a contest to see how many teenagers they can kill by like sundown. Oh or something my on God. Halloween. That'd yeah. Be amazing. And, yeah, and it's for a while, really Chucky um, versus Annabelle was talked about for a long time, and then it kind of fell apart. But now that Chucky has fully called out Mithrigan, who <laughs> is part of NBC Universal, maybe yeah. uh, not now because she's obviously way too hot right now. But once she she cools down a little bit, I could see her coming to uh, battle with. Give Chucky. me the James Wan Chucky movie. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could see Megan Megan versus Chucky more than Annabelle because Annabelle is tough because it's not really like a killer doll. It's just like ghosts like, right. yeah that's yeah. true that's true you know but, but that, maybe Megan, that's where we're going to the spirit realm we'll find yeah out. that's true that's yeah, true kind of well, we, that we will uh wait with bated breath here uh for any news i gotta imagine we'll hear something within the next month or two like if yeah if there's gonna be a new season out for potentially for halloween or something we gotta hear something like, soon they've gotta be so stupid not to green light it yeah. <laughs> they've gotta be so dumb so dumb. All have, my money to Peacock is going for Chucky. Yeah, I have no sense of how many people watch this show, but it because I don't ever hear anyone talk about it other than us, but I think it's just so good. I don't know. Hey, man, like I said, Horror Nights made me realize like how big Chucky is. It was yeah. the most popular house. Lines like out the door, like all, lo longest wait. Like people love Chucky. That's cool. great. So, That's yeah. great. Yeah, man. All right. Well, I think that's going to bring us to the end of our episode on Chucky season three, part two. Yes. Sean, thank thanks you guys. Thanks so much for being here, man. Yeah, thank you. Dude, this that is was so awesome. fun. Thank you, Tyler, Justin, Elizabeth. This is great. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Where, where, where can, fun time. Where can people, uh, you know, keep up on your work or follow you? Uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram at uh, Curly Whirl at C U R L E Y W U R L, or you can follow, you can subscribe to my Conan the Barbarian channel on YouTube, yeah, yeah. which is uh, Conan the Barbarian official on YouTube. That's my podcast and ongoing lore series. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, those are the best places. So thank All you right. guys. Yeah, awesome. Uh, well, thanks again for being here and thank you to all the listeners for tuning in this week. Before we head out, Elis, where can people reach us? Sequel rights at gmail.com or Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at sequel rights. Great reviews for your listening or just send some nukes to the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> uh well i think we have like maybe about a week or so break here uh before we are back with another check-in coming up we got uh uh bad boys ride or die i think is the next thing right mm. june 7th uh so after that movie comes out we'll have an episode out for you guys to talk about the latest uh adventures with martin loris and will smith <laughs> there but in the meantime as we are uh doing lately on the podcast we're going to end things with a brand new ai created song using uh suno ai and chat gtp uh we are bringing you the song dambala hey <laughs> you know I, I in the style of epic dark wave it's gonna be great uh this one's pretty much completely almost completely ai like i had created like a a brief chorus but even from that, like the, the AI like changed it from that even. So I'm going nice. to just go and say it's like totally AI, right? It's crazy. It's a pretty much a banger. I hope you guys like it. Uh, and we'll see you, uh, back in a couple weeks or so for, uh, bad boys, ride or die. See you then. We're in the depths of night where the spirits play. Chucky and Tiffany have found their way through the veil of shadows where the secrets hide. They call upon the darkness, let the curse collide. Dambala, 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 Chucky and Tiffany, the darkness day. Dambala, 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 Chucky and Tiffany, in the dark past day. A love forged in chaos, bound by voodoo thread, two dolls of terror by ancient whispers led. In the spirit realm, they dance with the damned 